wish to welcome you to our Sabbath School lesson for this week. Uh, the lesson for this week is entitled, Meekness in the Crucible. Meekness in the Crucible. Shall we bow together as we pray? Our gracious Father in heaven, we invite your presence as we take a look at this lesson for this week. We pray that the Holy Spirit will guide us into all understanding. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This week, we are looking at meekness in the crucibles. Remember, this is a running theme uh, for the whole quarter where we are looking at the uh, various crucibles that uh, we are called to endure, to endure as Christians. And uh, by way of definition, let's look at the word meekness itself because we are required to show meekness, to display meekness uh, in crucibles, in the crucibles that we face. So the, the word meekness is defined as enduring injury with patience and without resentment. We are called upon as Christians to endure pain with patience and yet without resentment, without resentment. Put another way, we have to patiently put up with pain without any bitterness. You know, when you look at this um, quality of meekness, um, it's such a difficult uh, quality to conceptualize, difficult quality to conceptualize, and even more so, uh, very, very difficult uh, to demonstrate in real life, not in abstract or theoretical terms, uh, but when you are actually in the midst of pain, you are supposed to endure pain patiently, we are being asked again to do something very counterintuitive. We are supposed to endure pain, patiently. As if that were not enough, we are supposed to patiently do it and show no resentment at all, no bitterness at all. Our memory text is drawn from um, Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, verse 5. Uh, these are words by Jesus himself. He says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Those that show meekness, those that possess this quality of meekness, we are told they are the ones who are going to inherit the earth. Inherit the earth. In today's lesson, we want to do something very practical. We want to um, visualize, we want to visualize glimpses or manifestations of meekness. How does this thing we call meekness look like? The first glimpse that we want to capture of meekness uh, is by looking at Moses. We know Moses. He was the leader of the Israelites. Uh, from uh, Egypt, uh, and he was supposed to take them into Canaan, as we know, uh, but we all know that uh, he didn't. Uh, he only saw Canaan from afar, uh, was shown a video of, of, of the promised land, and God allowed him to rest, refused him to actually cross over into Canaan. Uh, I, I, I know that uh, you know that the uh, the Bible says there was an opportunity, there was an incident where uh, Moses uh, was petitioning God to say, you know what, I, I want to cross over into Canaan with, uh, with the children of Israel. But God told Moses, listen, Moses, at this topic here, I'm done with this topic. Don't talk about it again. Uh, you are not going to cross. And of course, we know that uh, Moses died before crossing into the promised land. But... Of Moses, it is said, he was the greatest, uh, the meekest man that ever lived. 
uh, outside Jesus Christ, of course. But Moses in um, Exodus, let me just quickly find that for, for us here. Exodus 32, uh, from verses 9 through verse 14, we have an incident recorded of uh, the children of Israel. Moses had gone into the mountain uh, to uh, meet with the Lord. And uh, when he came back, uh, there was chaos in the camp. Uh, the children of Israel had requested Aaron to lead them into constructing this golden calf. Uh, a thing, of course, that God did not approve of. And because of uh, God's anger, he was, he was, he was uh, very, very angry. He came to a point where he said, you know what? I will just obliterate this nation, uh, start afresh, take them off the face of the earth. And Moses comes into the picture here. He comes into the picture. When the wrath of God had waxed hot against the people of Israel, uh, in verse 12 he says, uh, uh, Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out to slay them, in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth. Then Moses says here to God, Turn from thy fierce anger and repent of this evil against thy people. Look at Moses. He steps into the gap and he, he talks to God and he tells him, You repent. Repent of this anger. And then he reminds the, he reminds the Lord, he says, Remember Abraham and Isaac and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thy own self, and said unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. And all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And then when, when God had uh, this uh, superb sermon from, uh, from, from Moses, a one-to-one -one sermon uh, that God received from Moses in verse 14, and the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. You know, Moses even came to the point where he said, you know what, uh, if it means that you, 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 you take me out of existence, you, you just kill me right now uh, and spare these people, please go ahead. Because what will the Egyptians say when they hear that uh, God only liberated the, uh, the Israelites, emancipated them just to go and kill them in the wilderness, kill them in the wilderness. And God repented. So we see here Moses, the meek Moses, he's, he's willing to place himself in the gap. He's, he's willing to expose himself to non-existence, to the point where he's saying, you know what, it's better for you to kill me than to, uh, to not forgive these people. And God relents, God repents, God listens to Moses, uh, and um, uh, on goes the, the story. But Moses, this was not the only isolated circumstance or situation in which Moses uh, displayed this quality of willingness to be broken uh, so that other people may be spared. Moses, as a leader, endured a lot of gossip and criticism. Remember, there was even this uh, very caustic uh, uh, gossip. This one actually bordered on the verge of, uh, uh, of uh, disrespect when uh, his own sister, uh, Miriam, uh, started complaining and saying, you know what, why did you marry this Ethiopian? Why did you marry this Ethiopian? You know, and, and God was not pleased. Uh, Miriam and, uh, you know, became leprous, and uh, because of that, uh, uh, that criticism that he leveled against Moses, and uh, Moses did not fight for himself. God fought for Moses. This is one beautiful thing uh, concerning meekness. Meekness may present as weakness, but uh, if you have a bigger picture, if you have a bigger picture, uh, God is fighting your battle for you, so you don't have to panic. So God fought for Moses, 
He is the one who dealt with the people that were giving Moses a rough time. So meekness is not weakness. Meekness actually is seeing things uh, in a broader uh, uh, perspective, having the broader picture of things. Uh, you, you, you become meek, not because you are weak, but you know that God is fighting on your behalf. God is fighting on your behalf. Another example that we want to quickly look at, uh, this is uh, actually the, uh, the, the culmination. This is the, the apex of, of Joseph's story. You remember he was asked by his dad, take some food to your, uh, to your brothers who are taking care of our, our sheep. Uh, and he did. When he did, uh, very innocently carrying the food, uh, he got it to his brothers. They decided to, to sell him uh, into uh, uh, slavery. Uh, these merchants were going to Egypt, bought him, and he ends up in, uh, uh, in prison. Uh, and uh, from that prison, we know the story, he rises to becoming the uh, second in command in Egypt. Now we meet Joseph. Uh, we meet Joseph in uh, Egypt. He is in the palace. He is uh, second in command to, to Pharaoh. And uh, uh, we meet him here uh, with his brothers. With his brothers. They've come over to look for food uh, because of the famine uh, in, um, in Egypt. So we meet him here in verse uh, 3 of Genesis chapter 45. And Joseph said unto his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father live yet? And his brothers could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. Okay, verse 4. And Joseph said unto his brothers, Come, come near me, I pray you. And they came near, and, they say, and he said, I am Joseph your brother whom you sold into Egypt. Verse 5. Now therefore, do not be grieved, nor angry with yourselves, that ye sold me here. For God did send me before you to preserve life. What enables Joseph here to forgive his brothers is that... Um, he saw the big picture. Joseph gives us another picture of meekness, forgiving his brothers, the people that mistreated him, people that sold him into slavery. And now he meets them many years later. He tells them, listen, listen, listen. Don't be angry with yourself. When, when, when I look at what, what was happening and what has taken place, it is God, God who orchestrated all this because he wanted us, he wanted me to preserve life. He sent me ahead, you know, into Egypt so that he could preserve your lives by providing uh, the food. So we see Joseph here, uh, betrayed by his own brothers, imprisoned, uh, and in Genesis 4, uh, 45, verse 3 and 5, we see that picture of meekness. Somebody forgiving uh, people he was not supposed to forgive simply because he was meek. He had this quality uh, of meekness. Uh, another example, I think this is the pinnacle of meekness uh, that we are going to look at is the, uh, is the meekness of Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 to 48, says here, you have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. So here, Jesus is telling his disciples, uh, he's telling them that uh, uh, shift the paradigm, change the picture, become meek. 
And how do you become meek? You become meek by actually loving your enemies. People that are not lovable. People you shouldn't love. People who hate you. Uh, people who hurt you. <laughs> you know, they hate you and they hurt you. People that uh, are, are there to inflict injury and pain on you. You are supposed to love them. That's the meekness in the crucible that we are talking about. That irritating neighbor, that noisome uh, relative, that person who causes you pain. The Bible is telling you to do something counterintuitive. Love them. And uh, the very last uh, verse, which is just underlining this in 1 Peter 2, verse 21, what does the Bible say? Uh, For even here unto were ye called, talking about us Christians, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his footsteps. So when you talk about meekness in, uh, in the crucibles, we are talking about a reality uh, that Christ exemplified when he was crucified. Like a sheep being led uh, to the slaughter, he didn't open his mouth. That, that's that's uh, power under control. Meekness is power under control. But it's under control because you know that um, in the large scheme of things, uh, God is in control. God is doing something big. God is effecting something big. So you can afford to be meek. You can afford to uh, zip up your mouth and be quiet because Jesus did it and he showed us an example uh, uh, after which we should follow. So meekness in the crucible is the ability to see the broader picture. Ability to see the broader picture and to know that God is in control. It's not weakness. Meekness is strength. Strength in knowing that God has it under control. Let's pray together as we conclude our lesson. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this lesson of uh, meekness in the crucible. We know that um, we, we have to go through this. We have to go through rough times in life. But uh, when you ask us to be meek, when you ask us to endure pain uh, without bitterness, without resentment, is because you yourself have everything under control. You are fighting on our behalf. We have nothing to fear. We know that everything will be all right. Lord, we are praying for each Christian today, for each one who is listening to this broadcast, to tell them, to assure them, that uh, they should be quiet, they should be silent under uh, persecution, silent under pain, knowing that you are in control. Their lives are in your hand. You have not lost any battle. You are not going to start losing today. Everything is under control. You are fighting our battle because you have the big picture in mind. Thank you so much for allowing us to participate in meekness in the crucibles. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.